Hi, I'm Miss Aline, and I want to thank you guys for joining us for Armstrong Cable Channel's 20 and 100 Kids Corner. Today we're at Austin Town Intermediate School, and we're with the fifth grade class for Miss Houston. We are going to be having a lot of fun, and we've got a very fun story, Flip Historic, and our theme for the day is prehistoric stuff and dinosaurs. So stay tuned, we've got a really fun time planned for you and a very cool handprint dinosaur project coming up. Hey everybody, how are you guys? Good? Well, I am really happy to be here. My name is Miss Aline, and I'm happy to hang out with you guys here at Austin Town Intermediate School. You guys are the fifth grade class. You're the art class for Miss Houston, right? Yes. Very cool. Well, today we've got a lot of fun planned. We've got a really cool book that I want to share with you guys. It's got to do with prehistoric animals and some really complicated, really crazy names and facts about these prehistoric animals. So we're gonna go and kind of check that out. And then after we're done, we're gonna have a really cool dinosaur handprint art project. So, you guys ready to get started? Yes. Good. Um, okay, so let's start off by asking a couple of questions. Anything that you guys know about dinosaurs that you wanna share with me? How about you? They were here on Earth in the Triassic period. Okay. How about you? There were many kinds of species, small, large, and all that kind of stuff. Very true. How about you? Yeah, you. Um, there, um, that some were reptilian. Some were reptilian. Now. Does anybody know if some of the animals that we know today are actually like descendants of these prehistoric animals? Can you name one maybe? How about you in the back? Oh, me? Uh-huh. Oh, birds. Birds, very cool, very true. How about you? Turtles. Turtles, how about you? Yep, you. Sharks. Sharks, okay. So, we've got a little bit of knowledge and a little bit of background on some prehistoric animals. So let's go ahead and check out this very cool flip historic book. And as you can see on our cover, we've got some interesting things kind of giving us a little preview of what's gonna happen with this book. So, uh, does this look like one animal? No. no. It's a flip book and actually it goes through several different prehistoric animals and you kind of can guess what's coming next, but you might not know some of these names. So we'll share all of that. This book is by Sarah Ball. So let's get started. On our cover, we have Mamlodon. Hmm, let's see how that fits into the whole thing. Flip Historic by Sarah Ball. So, first we see, first we see Smilodon. The first thing you notice about me is my long, fierce fangs. I can take down large mammals with one bite. Horses, sloths, bisons, and camels are my favorite meal. I'm carnivore, of course. I use my powerful legs and shoulders to get my prey down before I get to go ahead and eat it. The grasslands are where I prowl hunting for my next meal. With my short legs and tail, I'm built to ambush my prey from the tall grass. On my back paws, I have four toes with sharp claws that I can retract just like a cat. Does anybody know what retract means? What does retract mean? Somebody I haven't called on. How about you in the back? Um, retract means like their claws go back into their paws. That's right. Excellent. So, like, like kitty cats. Kitty cats have paws that come out, but sometimes they can pull them back in so that they don't scratch you and they want to just kind of be nice to you and play around with you. Anybody ever had that with a kitty? When they're, they're kind of paw at you and play with you, but they're not scratching and that's really nice when that happens. <laughs> okay. So, we're going to go ahead and start flipping. And what does it look like we might be coming to? How about 
you. I don't think I've called it. Mammoth. A mammoth. Let's see. You think she's right? Okay, cool. My tusks grow about 13 feet long and weigh over 100 pounds. Wow. The tusks actually weigh more than some of you guys, I think, right? Yes. <laughs> okay, I use them to defend myself against my enemies, and they also earn me respect among my herd. I use the tip of my furry trunk like a hand to grasp and pull grasses, which I like to eat. I use, uh-oh. Layers keep me warm. In the winter, my coarse fur grows three feet long. That's pretty long. Underneath is dense wool, and under that is a thick layer of fat. I live off of this fat in the winter, when there's not too much to eat. I can't wait for spring, when I can feed on plants again. I can go on long migrations, traveling great distances on my strong, sturdy legs. My long fur, which covers even my tail, insulates me from the cold when I'm on the move. And his name is formally Mammothus. So you were very close. And that is actually the name that we use for mammoth. But he's the formal primitive Mammothus. All right, so now we go to our next one. We start flipping and we have, oh, what the? What is that? What does that look like? What do you think? Mm -hmm. Maybe a bat? Maybe, let's see what it looks like. I hang upside down when I sleep. Uh, just like bats do today. Hmm, think she's right. When I fly around in the dark, I find my way by using echolocation, which gives me a sound picture of my environment. I make high sound pitches through my mouth and nose and then use my big ears to listen for the echoes that bounce off of objects around me. I like to whistle through the air at night. My wingspan is about three times longer than my body and I use my clawed fingers to hold on when I hang from the ceiling of the cave. Did you know that I weigh only about as much as a candy bar? That's kind of crazy, right? Now, I have one other question. It said the wingspan is three times the size of the body. What would we look like if our arms were three times the length of our bodies? <laughs> kind of weird, huh? <laughs> I think I'm glad that I was made this way instead of that way. Unlike most modern bats, I have a long waving tail. I rest in a cave during the day and fly outside at night. That's why my name means night flyer and his name is Icaronitris. Huh, what does that look like it's gonna be? What do you think? <laughs> okay, let's see what we've got here. Thanks to my long neck, I can quickly spot enemies like wolves, lions, and bears. Being an herbivore, I prefer leaves and grass at mealtime. My nose is actually a short trunk and like an elephant, I use it to pull down leafy branches. That's kind of cool. Let's see what the second half of this guy looks like. With my broad round belly, I look like a llama. Ding, ding, ding. <laughs> or a humpless camel. My legs are sturdy and my feet each have three hooves. I live in a big herd on the South American savanna. And the last part of him. I'm very agile, which helps me outmaneuver predators. Watch out. I can also deliver a powerful kick with my hind legs. And this one is called a macrokinia. So she's right. It's kind of like a llama, almost kangarooish a little bit and kind of like a camelish thing too. Kind of weird, right? All right. Here comes our next guy. What does that look like it's going to be like? How about you? An eagle? Kind of looks like an eagle. A little bit. And a flamingo mix. Okay. 
Well, let's see what we got here. What do you think? It looks like, like an eagle mixed with like a chicken. Okay, an eagle and a chicken. That could happen, possibly back then, maybe. Uh, how about you back there? One more guess, uh-huh. A uh, dodo bird. A dodo bird, that's a good guess. Okay, so let's see what this girl or guy really is. My huge beak is strong enough to break bones. Wow, what if our mouths could break bones like that? That might not be cool. Put a whole other spin on somebody biting their sibling in a very, very unbehaved moment, huh, right? Okay. Um, my huge beak is strong enough to break bones. Mostly, I like to feed on small mammals. With my big eyes, I'm good at spotting them. I may remind you of an ostrich, but my wings aren't built for flying. But thanks to my long, powerful legs, I can run swiftly for a long time. One kick can be lethal to my prey. My tail is feathered, just like the rest of me. I'm one of the biggest birds of the Cenozoic era. So he's one of the biggest birds of the Cenozoic era, and his name is Gasternus. Gastornis. All right, I'm called Spear Truth for a reason. What does that look like? Uh, who haven't I heard from yet? How about you? An alligator. An alligator. That's very possible. What else does this maybe look a little bit like? Um, I don't think I've heard from you. How about you? Yep, with the coveralls. Like a type of snake? Maybe, maybe. Anybody else? How about you with the green shirt? Um, you know, it may be a crocodile. crocodile. Alligator, crocodile. One more guess that's not any of those? A dinosaur. Well, yeah, all of these guys are kind of in that prehistoric family. So let's figure out what this is. I'm called Speartooth for a reason. My razor sharp back teeth. They're useful for eating fish and mollusks. I, and like my relative, the whale, Whoa. I'm a Cetacean, that's it. A mammal that lives in the sea. My tail looks like a dolphin's. I swim like a dolphin too, though I'm much longer, nearly 16 feet or about as long as a pickup truck. Whoa. What would you do if you went swimming and saw something as big as a pickup truck swimming next to you? I'd probably freak out. I don't know about you. Would you freak out? Yeah. Yeah? Okay. I'm gonna ask you guys to keep it quiet, okay? All right. And our next guy is, what does that look like? Uh, let's get uh, you again back there. Huh? A rhino, okay. How about, Anybody else got a different guess? Or are we with him on the rhino? You got a different guess? What's your guess? I was gonna say a rhino and a monkey breed. A rhino and a monkey breed. That would be different, so let's see. Modern rhinos have horns like mine, but my front horn is broader. I use it to push aside the snow and to reveal the tasty grass underneath, or to fight predators. My eyes are small, so I rely on my strong sense of smell. I'm about six and a half feet tall, taller than most human beings. Since I live in the ice age, all my shaggy fur keeps me warm. My legs are very sturdy. My toes are spread out like a snowshoe, which helps me travel across the snowy ground. I prefer to travel alone. Herds aren't for me. So. That does kind of look like a rhino, I think. What do you guys think? Yeah? What does this look like? Um, do you have your hand up there in the pink? I haven't heard from you. 
Do you have a guess? You with the pink shirt with the happy faces on it. <laughs> yeah. A rat. It does look kind of like a rat. I agree. Let's see what this is. My pointy snout and big ears give me a very good sense of smell and hearing. I'm nocturnal, so my large eyes help me to see at night when I'm active. That does sound kind of like a mouse or a rat. I'm a marsupial, like a kangaroo. Hmm, a little different though. But much smaller. I move by leaping forward and I live in the desert. My soft furry coat is light brown on my back and white on my stomach. My hind legs are longer than my front legs, so I'm really good at jumping. I use my long hairless tail to keep my balance. And this is Argyrologus. What does that look like? How about you? So many breeds mixed together. A bunch of breeds mixed together. What do you think with the uh, blue jersey? A hippo. A hippo. That's a good guess. Let's see what we've got going on here. I have three pairs of knobby horns covered with skin. I may look tough, but I have a small brain. Aww. My fangs are mostly for protection because I'm an herbivore who loves fruit, leaves, and water plants. I'm a marsupial. Oh, no I'm not. I'm an herbivore. And there we go. With my barrel-shaped body, massive skeleton, I'm about as large as a modern rhinoceros. Did somebody say rhino? All right. I'm really heavy too. In fact, I weigh over two tons and that's really heavy. My stumpy legs look like an elephant's, but we're not related to each other. Hmm. I live in North America and like to be near water. And this is Eunotherium. Eunotherium. And this last guy, what does that look like? You in the pink. An ant eater. I think she might be kind of right. We'll see though. How about you with the uh, Angry Bird shirt? It looks like a sloth. A sloth a little bit? Anybody agree with that? Anybody got a different guess? One more guess. How about you in the back with the gray? It looks kind of like a bear. A kind of like a bear. Okay, let's see. I like to eat leaves and my long tongue helps me graze the trees. I weigh about three tons. Whoa, three tons. So I have to eat an enormous amount every day so I feel satisfied. Whew, that's a big meal. Unlike modern sloths, ooh, somebody was right. Unlike modern sloths, I don't live in trees, but on the ground. I use my curved front claws to pull down branches so I can get the leaves. I'm as large as an elephant and move around slowly. When I stand up on my hind legs to reach high into the trees, I support myself with my strong tail. It helps me to keep my balance. Standing up, I'm taller than three grown men stacked up together. Wow, that's pretty tall. And this is Megatherium. A little bit. All right, and that is Mamladon by Sarah Ball. Did you guys like that? It's pretty cool, huh? On the front of this, because some of these names are really, really kind of tough to pull out, it actually gives you some background on the names, tells you what the names mean, and how to pronounce them. So if you ever get a chance to check this book out, check it out, it's pretty cool. Now it's time for our very cool dinosaur handprint art project. You ready? Yeah. All right.
you're gonna do is you are gonna take your hand and you are going to take the part that you're using for your body of your paint and you're gonna cover one hand. Don't touch anything else or anybody else with this hand, but cover one of your hands and all of your fingers with that paint so that your hand looks kind of like this. And put it like this really wide on your paper. is take the paint that we have or the same color paint and if there's any extra right there that's just kind of gloppy you can use that and we had our handprint here and I added an extended part right here off of the side of my hand and that's going to be our tail. I think everybody's about done with their tails, so we're gonna go ahead and move on to our decorating part. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna start with our dinosaur toes. And so you're gonna go to the four fingers that are not on the edges. So you've got a tail on one side, a head coming off the other side, and then we've got four fingers in the middle of those two parts. You see what I mean? Does everybody see what I mean? Okay, everybody over here too? You've got a head over here, a tail over here, and then you've got one, two, three, four fingers in the middle of those, right? Those are your legs. So, you're gonna take your legs and you are going to make a little dot on the bottom of one and a, another dot right next to it for toes. And you're gonna do that on the next one and put a toe there and a toe there. also take the same color and if you want you can make let's see some circles on your dinosaur so and you got to be careful because your paint's a little wet so you got to do real lightly take a nice little glop of paint and very lightly make your decorations on top so that it doesn't mix with the other paints so if you can see I had dark purple but I can still take the light green and very lightly make a circle on there for my dinosaur's patterns.
your eyeballs and mouths go on. At the top part where your thumb, the top of your thumb was, you should see kind of like the outline of where the top of your thumb was. Does everybody see that? Okay. You're going to find the spot where an eye would go, which would be a little bit down from the top, towards the middle, but still towards the top. And you're just going to make a dot right there for the eyeball. Our very cool handprint dinosaurs. You guys want to try this at home and you can uh, play with the colors, play with the decorations and different things like that. I'm sure you guys can come up with lots of different color combinations and different decorations and things that you can do to make your very own handprint customized dinosaurs. I'm Miss Aline and I want to thank you guys for joining us for Armstrong Cable Channel's 20 and 100 Kids Corner. Today we were at Austin Town Intermediate School with the 5th grade class and we had Flip Historic and our very cool handprint dinosaur art project. So until next time we say goodbye. goodbye.